What's up team? Homegrown Big coming at you in my kitchen. Ah, blinded by the light. This is my vitamin D sun lamp. And it was one of my health investments this year before this winter started. Uh, it was one of my big health investments of 2018 was a sun lamp and then uh, most of the cost on the gym. And it is really worth it. I highly recommend it for vegans, for sure. You got to get this. That's like a no-brainer. But anybody who lives north, and then anybody who works uh, shifts, a shift worker. So for me, the company I work for, I work nights. I sometimes work twilight. I sometimes switch shifts. Um, my company works runs 24 hours a day, and I go where they tell me to go and do what they tell me to do. So I have to adjust. It's not necessarily great for the body. Um, there's some people who argue get it against it who say we're just like diurnal creatures and we would sleep, you know, 12 hours as soon as the sun went down. But that's, that's BS. That's um, conjecture because I've done a lot of anthropological reading and all of the people who are tribal all take shifts staying up at night to protect their tribe from being raided or from being attacked by wild animals. So humans have actually come from a very long history of not necessarily sleeping entire nights through. And I actually don't find it that hard to adjust to uh, as long as I'm making sure that if I feel really tired, I nap when I can. And that's what other animals do. Other animals take long sleep periods, but not necessarily the length that humans do. And they nap a lot. So, um, but that said, there's a lot of times when I go to work and it's dark and I come home and it's dark and I don't get the amount of natural sunlight that I need. And this has really helped me. I just sit in front of it 15, 20 minutes a day. And my, I'm excited to test my vitamin D levels this year because in the past, and I've reported this before on videos, I've been really poor in vitamin D status. So one year when I was taking vegan uh, VitaShine, D3, 10,000 to 15,000 IU. The recommended dose plus a little bit more. Totally didn't absorb it. Tested at 21, just above like rickets level. Terrible. That was the year this tooth crumbled. After that, other vegan sources, still low, unacceptable. After that, moving into non-vegan, um, taking lanolin that year was better. My teeth sensitivity started to heal. Uh, last year, I focused really hard on getting my D up during the winter I ate an enormous amount of pastured eggs and actually got cod liver. Tested first time that I can remember in however long in normal range during the winter. Low end, but still okay. Uh, I wanted to get a lamp because it's so much easier to use than having to get cod liver, you know, or whatever. But, but plus the fisheries aren't doing that great. You know, people say like, you gotta eat more wild salmon, you gotta eat more cod liver. Those are a finite resources right now. Our fisheries are not doing great. So, you know, even though people will make whatever claims about me as, uh, you know, somebody eating animal products, I still work within my ethical boundaries and making decisions that I think are better for the world at large and for our wild species. And then I make the choices that I need to make to keep me healthy. So, you know, you can be ethically unethical. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I make choices that reflect my perspective and best choices for me. Like everybody operates from a place of self-centeredness. And I can get a sun lamp and still help the cod and the salmon. Awesome. So there's that. I, and, and that's a thing that's, you know, I really love wild fish. Um, but I, will, I really avoid getting anything from uh, fisheries. I do my own fishing. I fish alpine um, 
trout. And that's my favorite. It's nice and fatty. It's delicious. And it's well stocked here in the state. And uh, I try to leave the, the gross wild fisheries alone. So that is the, uh, the health investment vitamin D. I recommend that this winter. You can, like I said, get these Walmart, Amazon, about 150 bucks. They used to be quite a bit more expensive, like 450 to 500, but then they became so popular with Scandinavians, it just kind of spread to people that live in other northern climates, and it's helpful. Helps with uh, people getting depressed in the winter, especially after Christmas. That might be you. Uh, moving on from that, I wanted to talk a little bit, not too much, because everybody's put out a million videos, but I I do want to just be transparent and share my own journeys and where I'm at. That um, I'm going to move into OMAD for a while and see what happens. Um, this um, is, I feel like the science and the results are there enough for me to want to have my own experiential learning with it. And I have done enough fasting in the past and intermittent fasting to work up to this that I feel comfortable with it. I feel like I'm still rebounding and recovering from possible insulin sensitivity starting to arise. I think I showed some photos about what I looked like at the end of my high carb vegan stint. It wasn't good. I started really, really uh, getting pretty flabby and putting on weight really easily, even though I wasn't eating that much. I think I was just eating way too much sugar for my genetics. And uh, I leaned out after that just fine. But I feel like I want to make sure that my insulin receptors are super healthy, that I recover them fully. And that's because, and I didn't realize this, until I got all the genetic work done, that I have a, a genetic predisposition to diabetes. Um, there are diabetes in my family. I, what's up, kitten? I thought that that was largely due to just the indulgences of my family and probably alcohol. Um, but, yeah, what's up? The food comes out at eight. I have automatic cat food, and they start meowing at about one hour before it comes. <laughs> Anyhow, um, for me, I just want to at least go through a period where I work really hard to get my insulin receptors completely healthy again, and make sure that I don't do anything that's going to sort of turn on uh, familial predisposition towards such things as diabetes. So that's, that's it. Today was my first day, and I had tried OMAD before, but my work schedule makes it a little hard, and I had to do some, some preparations for it. And I used to work out and then eat and then go to work, and then I'd be at work anywhere from 12 to 14 hours, and then I would get off work, and I'd be hungry, and I'd eat again. And... So in some ways, it was a bit of intermittent fasting, but then I would eat, and then the next window would be shorter. So I've now moved over into working out, and then going to work and coming home and eating when I get off of work. And that's a really weird thing, to not eat after you work out. It goes against everything we're trained with, everything the fitness industry says, and, you know, everything that I've done for years. But I actually felt so good today. It was amazing. It was not what I was expecting. Because even when I would eat, so I would try to just eat light after workout just to replenish my glycogen. And then fast to eat in the morning. And I would always get super hungry like halfway through work. So... This was interesting because I just did the full OMAD fast and I was so sharp and I was 
so clear at work and I felt so present and lucid. Um, it was good. It was a really good experience. And who knows if they'll keep doing that. Okay. <laughs> My cats. Anyhow, that was kind of the first go with it. And I've done full fast before and it's, you get over the first day, it's easy, you know. But for some reason, OMAD has been challenging in the past. And then today I just switched it up and it was fine. We'll see if that's the case moving forward. So I broke my fast um, with five eggs and about a quarter pound of ground beef and a quarter pound of pork. And I might go back and get a little bit more here in a bit. And I'm not doing any powders or supplements or elixirs or superfoods or anything like that because I feel like the food that I eat is so nutritionally dense, it's just really not required. I also eat a lot of organ meats and, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of blah, 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 whatever. If you go and you add organ meats into your diet three times a week, you're going to notice a difference. And, and I would be surprised. I'd be really surprised if someone didn't. I'd be so surprised. Um, I know people who've done some pretty serious self-experimentation where they eat pretty much only organ meat, because that's what the chief of the tribe got, right? Organ meat and fat. They got the best. And there's people that do that. They don't necessarily have YouTube channels. And they're just really healthy. <laughs> uh, so, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Anyhow, that's it. This video is getting long. Get a sun lamp. I really recommend it. It's worth 150 bucks. It's worth 150 bucks. I'll let you know when I get my blood work in the spring what the, uh, I normally get my blood work done right at the end of winter, right at the beginning of spring, because I think that that gives me a better vision of what my health is. If you're looking good after the winter, you're in good health.